On the lock screen, if you swipe down from the top of the screen, it will display quick access to various settings. When the tablet is unlocked, if you swipe down, it will show notifications. Swipe down again to display quick access to the settings. This is the same as a two finger swipe down. For very quick access to the camera, double tap to wake your tablet and then scroll from right to left on any part of the lock screen that isn't a notification or a button. If you have set an alarm on your Nexus 9, you can quickly access it by swiping down with two fingers from the top of the screen and pressing on the alarm symbol. The battery percentage, settings, cog and profile pictures are all buttons you can press. Also note the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth buttons have two actions. Press on the icon itself to toggle them on or off, or press on the words to access the dedicated Wi-Fi or Bluetooth settings screen. Also, make sure you take advantage of the flashlight button that makes use of the Nexus 9's camera flash. On the quick settings notification tray, the cast screen option makes it very easy to display your tablet screen onto a television with the help of the Chromecast dongle. So when the Chromecast is plugged into the television, simply press the cast screen option on your tablet. Choose your Chromecast and you should see your tablet on the big screen. The television screen orientation will match the tablet and it can play videos from YouTube with the minimum of fuss. Scroll down from the top of the screen with two fingers to see the percentage of battery life left. When the battery percentage is displayed, you can actually press on the battery as a means of quick access to the battery usage screen, which shows you what's using your battery. On the battery usage screen, if you press the three dots in the top right hand corner, you can access the battery saving facility. If you turn this on, it reduces the performance of your tablet, restricts background data such as email applications automatically checking for mail and limits vibration. These compromises will save a lot of battery. If you turn on the setting, both the top and bottom of a tablet screen will turn red to indicate you have battery saver mode on. Probably of more convenience is the ability to set the battery saver mode to kick in when your battery is either at 5 or 15%. To quickly access a notification, simply double tap on it to open up the application. If you want to know which application is displaying a particular notification, you can long press on it. This will show the source application. You can then press on the information button to drill down into the notification setting for that application. From the app notification screen, you can either block notifications from annoying applications or make the notifications from that application a priority, which means they are listed at the top of your notification tray and still appear when you set your tablet to priority notifications only. To manage which applications are blocked or are priority notifications in more detail, go to settings, choose sound and notifications and then select app notifications. You can manage each app from this screen, meaning you can completely customize how your notifications operate on your Nexus 9. To set up a more regular shift between all notifications and priority notifications, go to settings and choose sounds and notifications. The option you want this time is interruptions. At the bottom of this screen, you can schedule what's called downtime, whereby you set days and times where only priority notifications are signaled. This does not affect alarm notifications. If you want to prevent notifications appearing on your lock screen, but you still want notifications when you unlock your tablet, go to settings and choose notifications and sounds. Go to the option that says when device is locked and press on it. You will then have the option to don't show notifications at all. Once you've chosen this option, you will notice that any reference to notifications has disappeared from the lock screen, but when you unlock the tablet, you'll still be able to see your notifications. To hide the content of your notifications from the lock screen, go to settings and then choose security. Press the top option here, which is screen lock. In order to hide sensitive information, you do need some form of screen lock enabled on your device. So choose the style of security you feel most comfortable with and then proceed through the required steps. Eventually, you will reach this page, which will ask you if you want to hide notifications. Choose the middle option, which is to hide sensitive notification content. And then when you double tap to wake your screen, you can see notifications, but not the content of them. 
There are two primary ways to switch users. The first is from the profile button in the top right of a lock screen. The second is from the top of a notification tray if you swipe down with two fingers when your tablet is unlocked. If you want to add a temporary user to the tablet, the best way forward is to create a guest account. This will start a fresh profile that's not connected to any of your Google accounts. It bypasses the regular setup screen, so it's a quick way for someone to browse the internet, watch YouTube and take some pictures. You can easily switch back and forth between the profiles and every time you return to the guest account, it will ask you if you want to start a new session or continue with the previous one. When you are logged in as guest, you can remove the guest user at any time and it switches back to your profile. When you need a more permanent but much more limited user profile, you can press on the add user button and choose restricted profile. With a restricted profile, you can limit precisely what apps the user has access to. This includes settings and the camera. You might want to use this option to create a child friendly environment. Do note, however, that you will need some form of security setup on your tablet, such as a pattern lock, in order to create a restricted profile. When you have multiple users on the tablet, you can check to see how much storage each user is occupying by going to settings, then choosing storage and scrolling down to the bottom of the page. If you want to pin an application to your screen so it can't be moved, go to settings and then choose security, and next select screen pinning. In this screen, toggle the option on. Now, when you're next in an application, if you touch the overview button in the bottom right of the tablet, it will list the application you are currently using first. Swipe up and then you will see a green pin in the bottom right of the application window. Press the pin and then confirm you want to pin the application and that will effectively lock the back, home and overview button. To unpin the application, you need to press the back button and overview button at the same time for about two seconds. To put your tablet into silent mode, press on the volume button to bring up the volume level on screen and then press the bell icon. Press the new icon to come out of silent mode. Okay Google, what time is it? The time is 11.50 am. To ask your tablet a question, even when it's asleep, go to Google settings. On the left side of the screen, select the voice option and then press OK Google detection. Then toggle the always on option. There will be instructions to follow at this point, but once complete, all you need to do is say OK Google. On your main home screen, if you swipe in from the left side of the screen, this will display the Google Now cards. If you swipe in again from the left side, this will display options where you can set reminders, customize your Google Now preferences and tailor what's included in tablet searches. To change the text size of your entire tablet, go to settings and then choose display. Select the font size and choose your desired option. You will see an immediate change on screen and for reference, this is how it changes icon text size. To add high contrast to some of your tablet fonts, go to settings and choose accessibility. You can toggle on high contrast text. This will add an outer border to icon text and lock screen text amongst other things. If you have multiple home screen launchers and want to change to a different one, go to settings and then choose home. Select your new launcher and when you press the home button, you will be returned to that launcher's home screens. The settings screen includes a search facility at the top which is a magnifying glass. If you press on it, you can type in words to display all the related settings. If you go to the overview screen, you can see all your recent activity on the tablet. Each activity will have an application icon in the top left hand corner. You can long press on that icon to show more application information. And if you turn off your tablet, when you turn it back on, the overview screen should retain the list of your previous activities, although it might not remember exactly where you were. To see the latest Android Easter egg, which is actually a lollipop, go to settings and choose about tablet. Locate the Android version number and then tap on it a few times. A lollipop should appear and you can start tapping on that to change the color of it. There is a second Easter egg, however. 
long press on the lollipop to unlock a Flappy Birds style game where you have to tap the Android through lollipop gates. If you get addicted to this minigame and die quite a lot, make sure you take breaks and don't throw the tablet against the nearest wall. Thank you very much for watching this VGJ Felix video. I hope it intrigued, informed and entertained you. If it did, I would really appreciate you clicking that thumbs up button at the bottom of the video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so.